Well, Forrest Gump uh, is one of my favorite movies. Some people I've learned don't actually like Forrest Gump. I love it. And for me, it is a joyful experience to watch it. Now, on the slim chance you have not seen Forrest Gump, or maybe it's been a while, Forrest Gump tells the story of a young man named Forrest Gump from a fictional place called Greenbow, Alabama. Forrest Gump could be somewhat intellectually disabled. He could be on the autism spectrum. We really don't know, and it really doesn't matter. Now, what we do know is that, unless you're kind of cynical, we love Forrest Gump we, because we can identify with a character like him because even though he might be different from you or me, he possesses all the qualities that we admire and like to think that we also have on our very best days. Forrest Gump is honest, friendly, unpretentious, heroic, agreeable, loyal, hardworking, and very loving. But also like us, he does have issues. As a child, other kids bully him and make fun of what they assume are his limitations. And throughout his life, if he loses, he, he loses the people he loves most. Also as a child, Forrest has a physical debility. He must wear a leg brace and braces on both legs in order to walk, at least until he realizes that he can run. And running, in fact, is a major theme in this movie and an analogy. The idea of having legs or legs that work at all, but still moving through life, whether you can physically run or not. It's not about running away from anything, but running to symbolize freedom and discovery about the world and about yourself. It's about knowing that life is unpredictable and always changing, and it's not always what you want. Like the famous line from the movie goes, life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. And in the midst of all that, we are on a journey. We're running, we're traveling. And in pursuing that freedom and discovery, we find joy. One sequence in that movie epitomizes that joy. Forrest Gump sets off on a cross-country run. He runs from coast to coast, and back again, and along the way, others join him in increasing numbers, running just for the sake of experiencing it. This big group grows until they begin to regard Forrest as some kind of guru, someone who must have all the answers, which of course he doesn't. He's just running like they are. But at one point in the run, Forrest is splashed with mud from head to toe by a passing car, and a follower offers him a t-shirt to wipe the mud from his face. Forrest does, and when he returns the shirt to the man, the man discovers that on the front of his shirt, improbably, is the muddy imprint of a smiley face. And the audience laughs because, of course, this is just ridiculous, and it's assumed that this anonymous, anonymous man now holding this shirt is holding what's presumably the world's first smiley face t-shirt logo, and he's now going to make a fortune selling them. <laughs> but by this time, the audience also knows that with Forrest Gump, things like that just seem to happen. You never know what you're going to get. But of course it would be a smiley face. Because we're being reminded that when you know the freedom and discovery of running, literally or figuratively, you discover joy. That's not to say that joy doesn't arrive in our lives if we stay in one place. There can be plenty of joy found in stability and consistency. It's joyful to know that in about a week and a half, we will be gathering for a beautiful Christmas Eve service like we talked about earlier. That kind of tradition and what it means to come together for that year after year after year and knowing that we're only the current practitioners of that tradition, that a service on that night's been held by generations of our church members, and not only in our church, but gatherings all over the world have been held on that night for over 2,000 years. It's a joyful feeling to be part of something like that something that feels reliable and solid. It's joyful to gather for celebrations of any kind, not just the birthday of Christ, but any birthday, any anniversary, any moment of marking time, especially sacred time. 
But I would also say there's a strong case to be made for discovering joy in the running of life. Even if we do stay in place, time itself and life itself never stand still. A couple months ago, my son Charlie came to visit over the weekend. He's 27 years old. And as I was standing up in front of the church doing my thing, I looked over at Charlie sitting out there in the sanctuary in the pew, and I had one of those moments that lasted probably all of one second, but it was, for me, where time seemed to slow down as if I was watching some old home movie of him as a tow-headed little toddler squirming in his seat at church. He was still squirming in his seat at church at 27. Anyway, it was the same perspective, the same angle of me seeing him from all those years ago. And in that instant, all those years and all that's happened, things we never imagined, he and I, would happen in our lives, the great things and the not so great. All of that rushed through my heart, beating like the feet of runners in a foot race. At that moment, I thought to myself, wow, where did all the time go? But you know, that really wasn't the right question, and it never is. The time just goes. It always has. It always will. Things will always change, with or without our approval. Life hands us stuff, and a lot of it we'd rather not touch or taste. So the better question is, how did I spend that time? What did I do on that journey of all those years? I did have a choice, lots of them. And I still have that choice as long as I have breath in my body. The choice is to be a person who truly runs with life or not, who appreciates that we never know what we're going to get, but you don't let life run who you are. Now, as a person who even considers attending a Christmas Eve service, because you value the story and the tradition of what that Christmas represents, you decide where to run, and you decide when to run. And you run with all your heart, knowing that freedom and discovery are our gift and our inheritance from God in this brief, sacred time we have. So you run. You run to be honest and friendly and unpretentious and heroic and agreeable, loving, hardworking and loving and loyal. Because if you do that, you're running the life you've been given by God to live, created by God to live, and life is not running you. You run to do justice and love mercy and travel in humility with God. You run to love your neighbor as yourself. You run to let your light shine. You run after that one lost sheep. You run to ask forgiveness and to turn the other cheek. You run to welcome back the prodigal child. You run to bind up the wounds of the one who's been left for dead on the side of the road. You run to love one another as you have so been loved. You run because this is your time to run and the world needs you to run. And you discover who you are and why. You're in the race. And it's true. You never know what you're going to get. But of course, nobody else knows what they're going to get either. And that's not the point anyway. The point is to keep running regardless. And in all that running, whether your legs work or they don't, that's where the joy comes. Even in those crazy unexpected moments when mud has been splashed all over your face, the Apostle Paul once said, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Always, he says. <laughs> always is a pretty big word. Can we always find joy? Well, the only way I know to find out is to keep on running.